right now. Hey, I'm getting better at that stuff. <laughs> yeah, true. So true. Sorry. Excuse right. me there. Hey, kids. Good morning. Hey, it's, <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful Wednesday. The what is today? The the sec third of July. Third of July already. Holy moly! Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it, Sam? It, it does. Fourth of yeah. July is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The big so day that everybody likes to celebrate freedom. And uh, yeah. you know, it's interesting that we celebrate freedom once a year, but we really don't have any. That's uh, uh, so true. And you know, for crying out loud, we can't even own a roof over our head. That's one of my biggest pet peeves, right there with cancer. Cancer is yeah. my biggest pet peeve because that shouldn't even exist. But um, you know, neither should be the fact that we can't own a roof over our head, we should actually be able to own a roof over our head. <laughs> but hey, you know, that's another, another discussion for another day on another platform. We here, we are the Kong family and we're just here to change the world. And uh, you know, we're, we're actually doing it too. It's so amazing watching it all happen, watching the changing of mindsets, the changing of lives um, on a daily basis. And, you know, we're telling people around here all the time that if you want to change the world, you got to start with yours. And, That's so true. Uh, you know, when you change your own world, then you can turn around and help other people change their world. And, and as people's world change, so do their mindsets. And usually their mindsets change ahead of time. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's one of the things that's so cool. Change your water, change your life. It is truly that. Just like I, I'm always telling people, Sam, that what you said – in one of our, our past uh, episodes, you said, they don't say change your water, change your job, change your water, <laughs> change your car, change exactly. your water, change your house. No, they say change your water, change your life, because yeah. that's exactly what happens. This is such an incredible journey and incredible life-changing opportunity and company and vision and you know, just everything about it is so incredible. And, and it's such a blessing for us here at the Kong family as we change the world. One glass of hydrogen rich, oxygen saturated, incredibly hydrating Kong and water 9.5 at a time. One lightning bolt in a box, one amazing guest, one incredible family and person at a time um, that we get to we get to have somebody like you in here, Sam, you know, because everybody, I got to tell you something. I got to introduce Sam. If you don't already know who he is, he's a recovering scientist. And uh, that's what he likes to call himself. And I love it. I call him the Traminator because he's, <laughs> he's here to rock the world, baby. And uh, and that's exactly what he's doing. And, and uh, he adds so much incredible value. He's got such an amazing perspective just because of where he used to be. He spent 23 years in the pharmaceutical industry as a, as a lab scientist working, mm -hmm. trying to come up with something to cure cancer with, right? And, uh, and now after a, after a life-changing experience, here, he's here with us and he's on a different journey and a completely different path. And uh, wow, is it ever incredible to be part of it, Sam. You know, you're, you're an inspiration. Every day we all get to learn from you, and I, I for one, am just as grateful as could be. And so thank you so much for taking your precious time to meet with us and, uh, and give us a, a little bit of that wisdom. So you're well, taking your son to a science fair? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, he's, you know, we, we all have to keep learning. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, it's been amazing uh, that we we keep having this opportunity to learn every day, and I think most people, you know, most people close themselves off. You know, my son here, Spencer. Wait, say hi, Spencer. <laughs> so he's uh, he's uh, him and my daughter are actually going to my. He's going to camp first uh, over at the University of Washington, uh, and then my daughter's going to be taking a, a camp over there too. Um, but you know it's strange because as little children we we know that we should be learning but as adults somehow we end up thinking we know everything you know and that, that, that's strange how that is right and, and uh the more degrees that we have the more closed our mind is and so um you know that luckily i i hit my head a few years ago and became 
uh, you know, opened my mind back up, you know, and became more aware of how much, how much I didn't know. But I think that's what our society needs more of, you know, have you, uh, you know, cause JJ, you, cause you share, you share what we do with people and you can kind of tell right away the people that are closed minded and the people that are open minded, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it just, and it, it's such a strange phenomenon because, you know, even if we study something for another thousand years, we're still going to not know everything, right? But yet somehow, you know, people by living, you know, 80 years or, you know, they study for four years or whatever, they think they know everything. That's, that's such a weird uh, ego-driven, you know, ego-driven uh, belief, you know? Yeah. Right? So, yeah, awareness, you know, awareness of what we, uh, what we have at hand, awareness of if things are working or not working, um, in my mind, or what's, you know, what's, what's really going to change the world is awareness, awakening, or, or uh, those, those type of concepts, right? But in the science world, we never discuss awareness. We never discuss awakening or the spiritual type movements, right? We only discuss data, which, which is kind of, what's the word here, uh, which is kind of um, uh, tunnel vision, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's the world I, I came from. I came from a very academic data driven place, but it, uh, it didn't really, you know, I guess like it, it does pan out for some people, but because you, you are immersed in that world and, uh, but usually people have to get diagnosed before their mind opens back up. You know, it's kind of strange because our friends are getting sick and they're, they're PhDs. And, you know, sometimes I ask them, I ask them, so if you're, if you're a medical doctor, then you're exempt from getting sick, right? Uh, nope, that's not the case. <laughs> Doctors still get sick, you know? So scientists still get sick. Just because you have a degree doesn't mean you're exempt. You yeah. know? You know, I, I, I've uh, found some really interesting stuff in regards to the, you know, the awakening and the closed mindedness and that kind of stuff. Cause I've been taking a beating over on the cancer support group. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm yeah. surprised they haven't booted me out of there yet, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn and be more like, like you are in, uh, you know, being a little more uh, tactful in the things that I say and just simply giving out information and asking questions. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's interesting. They, these people, they, they seem to be so caught up into, that it's only the doctors. Like I asked somebody today, you, you know, your your doctor, ask him if he would go on chemo. Yeah. Because he's telling you that that if you're if you don't go on chemo, that you're gonna you're gonna die within a short period of time. If you do go on chemo, chemo that'll give you an additional year. And it's like, wow, what a crazy. What a crazy thought process to me, you know, just yeah. like, oh, if you, if you take all this poison, if you let us shoot yourself, shoot, shoot you up with stuff that we won't even let touch our skin or breathe in, yeah. um, that'll give you an extra year of life. And, and they refuse to take a look at anything that's natural, yeah. you know, do that. You, yeah. Do you know, uh, do you know why that is, uh, JJ? It's, I don't know exactly why. I know it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely crazy. Because um, logically, uh, logically, uh, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, why would you sign all these waivers and, you know, I, I won't sue anyone if this doesn't work. Why would you sign all those waivers uh, and take on all this risk um, for, for, and pay all this money for something that is, in the end of, you know, experimental. Yeah. Right. And so, so, but that's logic. That, that's me looking at the situation, but, but we're not, we're not dealing with things that, you know, people don't act logically. They act emotionally. And when you are emotional, shoot, they could do you, they could sell you anything, you know? And yeah, so, exactly. so that's, that's the issue with, that's the issue with being human. We are we are emotional creatures, and that the very emotion is what, what is what gets us into trouble. You know, jealousy, greed, all those things. And so, um, 
and that's that's why fear uh, fear has been used for thousands of years, and fear works so well to control people, you know, because it's an emotion, and you know, being emotional animals, we're gonna we're gonna be subject to it. Right? Amen. Um, you know, another another reason why I couldn't understand. Uh, well, I. I, uh, I went deep into the psychology of why humans do the things that they do. Um, it's because we have a, uh, what they call a confirmatory bias. And so once you, let's say if you believe that, um, you know, um, if you believe that Japanese cars are the best cars in the world, guess what? You're going you, you're gonna to seek, you're going to seek information that confirms that. Now and then, you're also gonna you're also going to uh, not look at things that disprove your your uh, belief. You know, so you're so you're biased to a certain belief. You know that you that you adopted. Right. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I know. For so, me, I've always I've been because I joined this this organization called the John Birch Society about 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. And for about 20 years, I was a member of that group. And I, I still credit with them with a lot of who I am today because they're an incredible group. But there came a situation where there was kind of a split and I changed, I changed directions and I'm not a member of that anymore. But the reason why is because of the fact that I changed that co confirmatory bias, as, as you call it. You know, I, yeah. I found out something that shifted my paradigm. Yeah. They made it so I no longer agreed with those people in that situation in, in that regard. And that, you know, so I started asking questions and they wouldn't answer them. And so I decided yeah. that that was enough. I wasn't going to be giving them my money anymore or my support, really. Yeah. Um, and, you know? and, and that's that's the um, uh, that's the detachment, right? You become detached. And, and so when you come into this particular project that we're both in with Kangan, um, I had a I had a sense of detachment uh, from my career. I had a detent a sense of detachment from uh, my prior belief system, my, from my education, from all those things, right? And so when you when you uh, propose this idea that natural works um, and chemicals don't work, well, you know we have to be aware that people are already attached to this idea that medicine works. And so now you're challenging a, a belief that's been in their head for decades. And so now, you know, and, and that belief is so strong, it's almost as strong as religion. Yeah. Right. And so, and so the, the, the anger comes up and the rejection comes up because you're, you're, you're challenging something that they've held on to for such a long time. You know, if I, if I told you that the, um, gravity is not real, You'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Like, let me show you. Let me drop an apple on your head or something like that. You know, you, you'd yeah. instantly want to prove me wrong, right? <laughs> well, well, you know, obviously gravity is real. But if, if your belief system is that, you know, uh, Western medicine is, the, you know, the, uh, the best thing out there, right? And, and you believe that and you've gone to the pharmacy and, Every time you got sick, you you got some antibiotics and you got better and you know so so nothing's really gonna uh, you know increase your awareness or increase your openness. You're actually gonna fight it. From, it's, it's a fight or flight response. Right. And so uh, for me, uh, tactically, strategically, I don't I don't challenge people directly uh, because it it's a, it's like challenging someone's religion. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna hate you or they're gonna violently oppose you or something like that yeah. and it's 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 ironic because truth uh truth takes the same path you know first it's ridiculed secondly it's it's uh violently opposed right and and thirdly it's it's accepted as being true yeah exactly and so you know it's 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 uh, it's more of a uh i'm fascinated by how how um our society has been so effectively brainwashed. You know, if you look at, if you look back at history, there's been other societies that have been brainwashed. The, the most recent one being uh, Germany in World War II. You know, what, what Hitler did and, and, and the ability to brainwash a whole nation into doing 
atrocities and basically, you know, uh, basically that was a religious warfare almost, you know, it was, it was on the Jewish people, right? And, and how effectively they were brainwashed, but no one ever saw it because they had confirmatory bias. They believed in something and then they, it, 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 it fed upon itself, you yeah. know? Yes, totally interesting. And, you know, I got a, I've got something I want to share with you, Sam, and, and get your your thought process on this. Because um, yeah. I'm, like I said earlier, I'm trying to learn from you and and utilize the the wisdom that you've taught. You know, and and like Dan here, he's taught me so much, and I'm trying to learn from that too. I'm trying to learn from everything and everybody all the time. I, I, you know, gosh, the day we stop learning. We might as well just be six feet under as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> exactly. That's why, I, that's why I'm not a member of the JBS anymore is because I learned some things that changed my perspective. And, uh, and so I'm always, people before that time frame were like, yeah, you don't, you, you just, uh, everything, the numbers, uh, 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 you know, you just, all this, all that. And the truth is, is I'm always trying to learn. And, and if something changes, if I find something, that changes what I thought, then, then I, I, I got to look at it. I can't just take something that's, that's real and, and dismiss it because of whatever my thought process is in my dang brain cell. But I had a guy that was really hammering me on that con cancer support groups, tell, call me a snake oil salesman and all that kind of stuff, even though I never tried to sell anything to anybody. Yeah. Um, but I ended up putting out one of the things that you sent out, which was uh -huh. the 300 plus studies on uh, molecular hydrogen. And I, I just, all I did is I put that out in that thread and said, you know, so I guess these guys are all snake oil salesmen too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that, and I never heard anything back from there. And so who knows, maybe, maybe he actually went through and read some of that stuff because that was all the, the stuff from PubMed.gov and, yeah. you know, 300 plus studies on the benefits of molecular hydrogen and, and all that. And so that was the tack that I took. What, what kind of a thought process do you have on that? Yeah, you know, there's, um, you know, I, I, I stopped arguing with fools, you know, because... Who, who, who argues with a fool? I mean, uh, you know, some days I'm a fool, you know, some days, some days I make mistakes and, but who argues with a fool? A fool. A bigger <laughs> fool. <laughs> it, it only takes a bigger fool to argue with a with fool. So I tend not to, you know, I want to, I want to spend my time working with the willing. I don't want to spend my time working with the unwilling. You know, so if you're, if we're able to have a discussion and, and, and improve uh, and uh, um, increase awareness and learning, then let's do it. But I'm not here to convince anyone. That's just a waste of time. You know, and, and unfortunately in our society, it, it's come to that point, right? Either everyone's uh, Democrat or Republican or everyone believes this or that. It's just... It's just everything's been politicized, and it, it's just a sad state of affairs. But it 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 holds true to the um, the ongoing um, control. You know, basically, you divide and conquer, and so you divide people in a variety of ways, and and force them to divide themselves. You know, and that's that's what we've become as a society. We don't we don't agree to disagree. You know, we agreed to, we, we just disagreed to hate each other. You know, even, even within the family, uh, you know, certain, you know, whether it's, it's football, you know, if you're, if you're from the one college or another college within the state, you know, you have rivalry week and you wear different clothes and you, you know, you, you wear different, uh, either UW Huskies or Cougars, right? And it's like, what's the big deal? It's all entertainment. <laughs> people, people, sometimes people take it too far and it, uh, I, I see that. I see that's how we've been controlled is we end up dividing ourselves. And it's, it's kind of sad. But uh, but to your point, I, I don't really, you know, I just say, here's the data. I know who I am, uh, you know, and if you want to partake in it, if you want to 
drink the Kool-Aid, then drink the Kool-Aid. But if you if you don't, then hey, I guess that you you're enjoying your own Kool-Aid right now. And yeah. and that's what people don't realize that if you don't consider uh, other opinions or consider um, that that you don't know everything, then then your mind is going to be full of what you already know. And if what you already know is working, great, keep doing it. But if it's not working, you might want to try something else. You know, and it's not simple, but you know, not everyone's going to buy into that idea, right? It's just too simple of an idea. Some people just have to buy into complex and expensive and side effects and all that stuff. And it's okay. You know, I, I, I believe that the world is uh, overpopulated as it is. So uh, a little bit of uh, survival of the fittest is what our species needs, you know, because um, we don't think, you know, we politicize everything like animals. Animals out there are using uh, what they're using um, instinct to survive. They smell things, you know, they, 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 see, uh, uh, they see what works and what doesn't work. They avoid bad things, right? They avoid dangerous things because for them, it's survival of the fittest. For us, eh, we'll listen to the guy in the white lab coat because yeah. he's got all the data. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's sad, but it's, it's the reality. And so um, some people are going to have to have a, uh, a, uh, a big shock to their system, right, to, to open them back up. And it's, it's usually in the form of a crisis or a tragedy before their mind opens back up. And that's exactly what happened for me. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not speaking from a, you know, uh, uh, I'm higher than everyone else. I just, I just, I hit rock bottom before everyone else. You know, literally I cracked my head open and, and went through a phase where I just was questioning my, my morality. I, I was questioning my, uh, what I was doing on this planet. And so some people don't want to have that discussion because it's too scary. You know, it, it's, you know, when you look in the mirror, sometimes sometimes you don't see the per you don't like the person that's looking back at you, and so that's that's why that's why some people fight you so much because they they hate to be wrong, you know, and, and it's ego driven, right? So, but that's why I just stick to my data. I have my opinions, and uh, you know, I early on in the game, JJ, I really I really did, you know, poke at people, right? I, I really. I was a thorn in their side, but um, ultimately uh, yeah. they are a thorn in their own side. Pardon, hey. Sam, <laughs> my sweetheart. Hey, Sam. She's at the hey. How's it going? <laughs> Look at her t shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, honey. Have a great day. Thank you. Any, sorry about that. Oh, no worries. No worries. But, yeah, and it's just, yeah, we. You know, uh, JJ. So we're 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 looking for um, people that are open to work with. We're not working. We're not really looking to change everyone's life because ultimately we can't change everyone's life. They have to change their own life, right? That's. It's not my job to. It's not my job to change everyone's life. It's my job to maybe share information. But it's your job to actually receive it and actually open your mind to it. Yes, amen, amen. And that's something that I've learned from you that has really helped me a ton. Um, you know, we've got to we've got to open the door. It's their job to walk through it. Exactly, you know, exactly. It yeah. Kind of reminds me of the end of that World Without Cancer book, where he says, "You now have the ability to live in a world without cancer, and the only reason you have that ability is because someone out there was gracious enough to." to bring this information to your attention. Can yeah. you do any less for others? Yeah. And that was something that has just hit me like a brick. And, and, and for me, it's the same thing. This it's, it's so interesting, Sam, because the, the origin of the world without cancer and the origin of Kong and water are in the exact same place, the yeah. land. Of Pusa. And, and that right there for me, when I found that out was just, wow the lord works in mysterious ways how he puts us into these positions and puts us into these situations and and it's you know it's it's exactly the same thing for me and i would like i'd love it if you would expand on something that you've already 
talked about here, which is ego. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we know that ego, people having egos is a, is a real problem. That's, yeah. that's part of what makes it so people can't change their paradigm. They can't, yeah. they can't look at something different because of their ego. And um, from what it sounds to me like is you, you had somewhat of an ego as well, as we all yeah. do and have yeah. and whatever, but, but something changed that. And could you, I know you've already, ex ex you know, you've told everybody about how you hit your head and all that kind of thing, but how did it, how did that all end up really changing your thought processes and help you take that ego and kick it to the curb and realize that, as you've said before, that you're nothing. Yeah, exactly. So I, um, you know, so, so we, we interact with children, right? We on, you know, maybe not on a daily basis, but oftentimes we go to birthday parties and we, we find little kids and, you know, little kids say they learn their things, right? They're, 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 they get a free pass, right? Because they're children, you know, two, three, four, five, six, you know, you know, 10, 12, 15 year olds, they say something. But um, the development of the ego is, is the development of our uh, own identity, right? We, we, we become detached and we become our own self. We become selfish, right? We become ego. You know, that's why a lot of teenagers, uh, you know, they, you, you start to develop an ego in your teenage years and you, all of a sudden you start talking back to the parents. You know, you start knowing everything. You start, you know, rules are meant to be broken type thing because you're, you're, uh, you're not just a, a conformist now. Now you're an individual person, right? And so, um, so what, what happened for me was, you know, I, I went the same path there. I, I get educated. I went through the whole system like everyone did. And I, I thought that was the path. And then I had, uh, I had actually, uh, even before my near death experience, I had, um, gone through midlife crisis at 38. I was, uh, you know, kind of taking an assessment of my life. Why was, why I was not happy, even though on paper, uh, everything was great, you know, six figures, scientists, you know, immigrant kid from third world country, you know, why I was not happy. And so I took this, I took this, uh, uh, I became a ski instructor. So I don't know if I told you this before, but um, I became a ski instructor. And my first ski lesson, uh, well, I've been skiing for like 25, 30 years. Um, my instructor was a retired Boeing engineer uh, named Richard Line. So I'm still friends with him. And uh, he said, um, Sam, uh, well, he, he thought was talking to all of us. He said, hey, guys, uh, we're, we're going to ski down the hill and I'm going to uh, look at your guys' form and do an assessment of your, your technique and things like that. And I'll see what, you know, what kind of education, what kind of teaching I need to do for you guys. And I kind of rolled my eyes because I've been skiing for like 25, 30 years. It's like, okay, whatever, whatever old guy. Right. And then, and then he, he proceeds to say, okay, if we, if we get separated, uh, we're going to meet down at that lodge right there. And he points down the hill and we'll go, okay, that's cool. And then he proceeds to go. And uh, we follow him and the dude is just, the dude is like 65 years old and he's just bombing the hill. And, but he's so smooth. He's like in one of those Warren Miller uh, skiers, you know, uh, he just ex ski racer or something like that, but just smooth as glass. And then, and just efficient, it, you know, he wasn't fighting the mountain. And then he gets down there and he's, I see him, he's holding his little clipboard or his little notepad there. He's taking notes on us and we arrive and, we arrive behind him and I'm bent over breathing, like <sighs> panting. Right. And then, you know, he waits till all 12 of us get in there. He goes, Hey Sam, I just, I just made you slide down the hill on some uh, slippery snow. Uh, how come you, it looks like you just, you just climbed the mountain there. And I said, hold on, let me catch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> And he's sitting there like he's not breathing hard at all. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Is this guy like super conditioned cardio guy or what, 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 what the heck's the deal here? So uh, then he asked all of us a question and uh, it made me realize something. It made me realize uh, I don't know what the hell I'm doing skiing, even after 25, 30 years. Um, I just got back home, so I might jump over to Wi-Fi here. Hopefully it won't, uh, it won't drop off. But um, um, 
I realized that I didn't, uh, well, he asked me this. He said, uh, Sam, I just made you slide down the hill. How come, uh, how come you're breathing so hard? And I said, well, you know, when I go fast, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to shave some speed, right? I have to take off some speed. And so I put on the brakes and then, um, then I go fast again. And then I have to control my speed. Otherwise I'll crash. And so he told me, well, Sam, I, I don't use the brakes. And I was like, I was thoroughly uh, perplexed by that statement. Like, how do, you, how do you ski without controlling your speed? Well, he said, he said, I don't use the brakes and, and I use the mountain's energy. And at that point, I was like, okay, who's this guy? Like, who, like what does he know? Because uh, he's like thoroughly confusing me. Uh, as far as using all these uh, Yoda speak, right? He, <laughs> and, so, and basically, he said, "Well, I just, I just, I just use the mountain's energy to slow down." And I just, we all just like looking at each other, like, "What the hell is he talking about?" He said. Then he asked me, "Which way do you go when you want to go fast, Sam?" I said, "Well, shoot, that's easy. Go down the hill, right?" And then he, then he asked me, which way do you go when you want to go slow? And I said, well, I put on the brakes. No, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask you what you did, but I said, which way do you go? And, and that's when I realized, holy smokes, maybe I'm missing something here. You know, maybe I'm missing this concept of using free energy. You know, tapping into uni the universe, tapping into gravity. Because he explained it like this. When you go with gravity, you go faster. When you go against gravity, you actually slow down. So I'm walking through the hall here. You know. So that's that's when it, it became it became apparent to me that holy smokes, I have really missed out on the lesson here. And that's when I realized I had I had ego, right? And everyone has ego. Everyone has a Everyone has a bias that they, they think they know everything, but they when when they actually don't. Yeah. You know? And and it happens it happens to all of us in this society because this society uh, tells you so many different things. You know. Amen. It tells you that it tells you that oh you should listen to the guy in the white lab coat. He's got more degrees than you. When and 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 the person the person with the white lab coat really does believe that they know more than you. Maybe they do, you know, and often, oftentimes they do. But uh, what, I, what I realized was everyone has ego. Everyone. And then that, that fear is used to control us, whether that be religious fear or scientific, scientific fear or engineering fear. You know, there are people who know more than that me, obviously, more than all of us, obviously. But they don't know everything, right? Yeah. Because that's that's why I use a lot of logic to to counter a lot of these in, very intelligent people. It's like, oh, so you're you're a uh, you're a doctor, you're a you're a scientist, just like me, right? So because you're you're an MD, PhD, that means you're exempt from getting sick. Yeah. Nope, not the case. <laughs> Sorry, you're exempt from dying then. Because you 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 you're so well read, wrong. Sorry, it's still survival of the fittest. You, you know, it's like the point is not to try not to get sick right early, and so you know, there's that ego always comes in. So that ego always comes in, and when it came in um, at 38, I started to study. I started to like check my ego at the door. So I don't know anything. So I started to study again. And that's, that's when I kind of woke up to this whole concept that, man, I just need to keep learning. You know, and then I began to look for a way out. You know, when, when, when you realize that maybe you've been programmed, then, then you, you start looking at, you know, what the system is. Yeah. Maybe the system is a very, it's like the matrix. It's exactly like the matrix. When one thing unravels, like there's a domino effect of things that unravel. And for me, I, I'm a scientist, so I, I said, well, what if, you know, what if I, I unravel this science thing? What if we don't know what the hell we're doing? 
and we keep engineering our own problems. I said, oh, that could be a possibility. But now, the more I look at it, you know, I was like, that's what we've been doing. You know, look at look at antibiotics, right? Antibiotics kill all the bacteria, right? But now there's research coming about about the gut microbiome, which is all bacteria. And so when you take antibiotics, you kill off certain bacteria and you, you leave the strong ones and they become the dominant species in your gut. But they can't digest the food like the, the weak ones could or the, the other ones or the lactobacillus or whatever, right? And so you, char- you start changing the population within your gut and pretty soon you can't digest bread or meat, you know, uh, milk, eggs. You know, you, you start becoming allergic to stuff and, and then and then you treat that as a disease you know, yeah you don't, don't yeah he's like shoot pretty soon pretty soon it'll be it'll be like uh, a a health condition to eat in this country <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you can't be free of everything you know oh is that nut free and soy free and milk free and you know uh wheat free and that's like like, I'm sorry, but you know those things come from Earth, and if if you if you you know if you start eliminating, you know pretty soon you're going to eliminate everything, and then what happens? Then then you're then you're going to breathe air and drink water. Well, well, but there's pollen in the air, right? And you're allergic to pollen, so I guess like oh, hold your breath, I guess. <laughs> oh my God! At some point, at some point, we can't eliminate everything, you know. Yeah, we're going to be life free. Like, yeah. we don't have no life. <laughs> exactly. It's so That's crazy. It's and just... A lot of people, Sam, they don't live. They're yeah. alive. Like, my, I, had, I lost two of my sisters last year. And, um, and they were alive for the last 10 years of their lives, but they weren't really living. Yeah. We had oxygen bottles hooked up to them everywhere they went and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know it's a sad thing because they wouldn't they wouldn't look they wouldn't listen to to the solution uh, yeah. which is their body their body is the solution we just need to give it what it needs and yeah. for me I don't ever eat anything that says fat free on it if it says fat free I'm not eating it. It, it period it's not happening one of my favorite little desserts is those little creamy pops that uh, it's just a little Kind of a little popsicle. I used to love those things. Mm-hmm. And they went on sale up at the grocery store a while back. And my sweetie told me, yeah, the creamies are on sale. And I went up there and looked at them. And every single one of them, all of them, they're all fat-free now. Yeah. And I went, well, bummer. I guess I don't get to eat my favorite little dessert anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah. You know, fat-free. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if we're uh, – so there's um... – you know, getting back to that ego thing where, where you know, we become self-aware. You know, but oftentimes, uh, most of our society uh, is ego-driven. You know, you look at Instagram, you look at Facebook, you look at all the social media. Social media is about bragging about yourself, right? No one, no one puts dirty laundry on, on social media. They, don't, they, don't, they just want to make friends, uh, fans, and followers on social media, right? No one, no one questions and... and and makes and makes people think, you know, and so because you're you're there seeking confirmation, you're there getting that uh, that dopamine hit when when someone likes your post or gives you a thumbs up, and 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 that that strokes your ego, and that's why that's why social media has taken off the way that it has, you know, and 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 because most people are ruled by ego. Most people are ruled by ego, and that's why um, when you are young um, and someone teaches you something, right? someone schools you, you accept the lesson. You raise your hands and you ask questions, right? But when someone schools you when you're an adult, you put up your hands and you want to fight them, whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally. And that's where the pushback comes from. And so it's, it's like, oh, I've touched a nerve there, right? I've touched a belief there. I've challenged someone's uh, religion. And, and religion today is, is, wow, we're the best. 
that's become, uh, you know, that's what we know everything. You know, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, I'm a scientist, I know everything. And that's just a bunch of BS because yeah, you, you know, even for myself, I look at myself and it's like, how much do I really know? You know, I, I, I paid tuition, I went to college, but you think that's, that's what everything college teaches everything? No, college t teaches you to have a good job. Nowadays, you know, nowadays it's not, not that much of a good job anymore, but you know, what, what do people know? Like if, if people really knew, wouldn't they be free? Yes, indeed. And so that, and that, you know, you, you in order to have that discussion, you kind of have to do, you have to question your ego. But that's the that's the fight, JJ. So that's that's when you when you when you pose a question, you're not really you're not really uh, fighting anything other than someone's ego. Right. That's a that's a great point, Sam. Um, I'm, 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 I want ask you if you would uh, try to I don't know this might be an interesting question and maybe not even possible to really expand on too much but I don't know somehow this just this question came to my my brain cell um, mm -hmm. short of having a near-death experience what kind of recommendation would you give to people who would like to maybe curtail their ego a little bit um i would i would say i would say um study other cultures i would say travel i would go spend some time um with people that grew up in a different system you know because um and people people don't really realize how how much programming there is right like if you go like if you have a guest from another country stay in your house and you watch tv with them for a while you know if they're from europe or asia they'll be go wow why is there so many drug commercials on your tv and and when they say that to you you'll be like oh i never noticed that there was so much you know it's kind of like it's kind of like you decide to go and buy a red car right then all of a sudden, like every other car is red. You never noticed how many red cars there were before until you decide to buy a red car and it seems like everyone else has a red car. It, it becomes into your awareness. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, sure is. You know, and so, so you, were, you were that, uh, you were kind of unaware, right? So, so one way to, to become more aware is and, and, and to point that ego out because ego, Ego is a um, self-preserving um, software that runs in your head, right? And so if I, if I didn't have ego, I would drop this pen on the floor and then I'd go commit suicide because I'm such a bad person for dropping a pen on the floor. Well, ego keeps me alive and say, you know, it's no big deal. It's just, it's just a pen. I can just pick it up, <laughs> right? But unfortunately, ego never wants to take a back seat. So it always wants to rule, rule the world, right? Right. So it wants to rule your existence. It wants to rule everything. And so at some point, uh, you know, that's why people, people don't physically check their ego until crisis, until, until that, that come to Jesus moment, right? Where, where everything they know has, has called, is called into question. And so that's, that's what, unfortunately, is going to take for a lot of people. That's what it took me. But there are people who, who practice meditation, practice, uh, you know, traveling and, and discussing uh, with, with other people, other cultures to, to expand their mind. And that's what it's going to take. You know, uh, closed-minded has never, never really invented anything. Closed-minded has never really changed the world. You know, it did a lot of bad things. You know, uh, it, it, it did a lot of atrocities, you know, but uh, it didn't really ever do anything good to be closed-minded. You know, every so um, scientifically, scientifically, JJ, um, the advancement of science has been a battle against entrenched error. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so 
every person that's advanced knowledge had has had to fight existing knowledge. Yeah. True. Yeah. Whether you know, you, you you study astronomy or you you figure out that the world is actually round, not flat. You know, the first person that proposed that they locked them up. Yeah. Right. Wow. You mean what? Do you mean the Earth is not the center of the universe? Oh, you're crazy. We're gonna excommunicate you, and you we're gonna lock you up. Right. Like, so everything, you know, whether, you know, any kind of advancement is, is, is going to be fighting against the existing belief. Yeah. Right? Amen. And only with, yeah. Only with the separation of time. You know, a perfect example of that to give people an idea of that concept. Um, scurvy. Yeah. Scurvy yeah. was a disease that was killing people um, on, on maritime journeys. Mm -hmm. um, all those years ago and they the entrenched psychology whatever the entrenched scientists doctors whatever they they knew what the 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 solution was but it never got released and they didn't start putting limes and lemons on the ships for about a hundred years after after they had known you know yeah. somebody had come out and and brought up what what the solution was and it took like a hundred years before they finally said, "Oh, okay, yeah, let's start giving them lemon and limes on the, on the ship." Yeah, yeah it was actually a you virus know, so, or something. Yeah, and and you know um, that that kind of shows the how we are connected to Earth, right? Because I think originally, um, um, uh, I think it was proposed by Indians to the uh the travelers the first travelers that they ha they had to boil pine needles or or bark or something and get some kind of vitamin c or something some kind of leaves or roots or something right to get vitamin c and they would take care of their scurvy and yeah. then there was like oh these 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 uh these uh savages they don't know anything about modern science meanwhile they know everything right <laughs> like, Literally, they're 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 living out, you know, these quote unquote savages, right? These these Native Americans, when the first uh, settlers arrived, when the first explorers arrived, like they don't know anything. Like this is the new world. They don't. We need. They're not educated. Well, who's who's the uneducated one here? You know, and if you look at our society, a uh, hundred years from now or five hundred years from now, who's going to be the uneducated one? I know that we, uh, in, in 2019, we can look back 500 years and go, wow, those guys are like idiots back there. <laughs> what are they going to say about us 500 years from now in the future? I can't believe you guys put Roundup on everything. and You thought that was safe? Uh, you guys like, you guys were sold twice. <laughs> yeah, put fluoride in our water. Yeah, it's like all these things. It's like at some point, at some point, we gotta we gotta call it out for what it is, right? It's it's, it's big business. It's just it's programming, and so I I'm I'm a scientist, and as a scientist, I disprove things. A true scientist disproves things, right? Uh, we don't we don't we don't seek to prove something. We seek to disprove something, and the, science today doesn't do that. Science today confirms what it what it already believed. Yeah. And that's how we've gotten in trouble because we don't, we don't question the status quo. It's like, oh, chemicals are the way, right? Well, then I guess like we, 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 just, we just haven't found that magical chemical yet, even though nature has been doing chemistry for, you know, billions of years, right? Yeah. So it just, it's, a, it's hubris. It's, it's a, you know, hubris is a word that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, um, a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, attribute to older societies like Greek and Roman hubris, right? But today we have modern hubris. We have scientific hubris. So we don't know everything. I, I sure as hell don't know everything. I'm just, I'm just fumbling around this, uh, you know, like everyone else. But I, I know that I don't know everything. And I accept that I'm ignorant. Ignorant is not a bad word. Ignorant means I don't have... I don't have, uh, you know, uh, I don't know everything. I know a little bit about a lot of things, but I don't know everything about everything. 
Right. Right. Well, that's better than knowing a lot about one topic only. Yeah. Right. You could be so deep in one topic. You could be MD, PhD, and, you know, study this topic for 40 years. You know, whether you've been studying ants for 40 years or something like that, right? You're, you're, you're a re world-renowned expert. But what the hell do you know other than ants? You know, you know I love all this, this discussion today, Sam, because I think that's a big part of the battle that we're all facing um, is trying to get people to just simply open up their mind and realize they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And maybe yeah. give it a shot. How about maybe you try to learn what you don't know yeah. instead of just dismissing it. Like the other day I was at the grocery store and I saw this guy buying some distilled water. And of course I, being the water snob that I am, <laughs> I got to give him a card. So I hand him one of my cards and he wouldn't even take it. Yeah. He would not even take it. Yeah. And so you know, that kind of person, I feel really sorry for people like that because they're, you know, it's like one, another thing you said, what if this is the answer to your prayers and you ignored it? Yeah. Man, that's a tough thing. If you've got a heart in your soul and you care about other people at all, it is difficult to see that kind of thing happen. It literally, like it kind of, it wasn't because it's like, oh, I'm not going to be able to sell this guy a Kangen water machine. And so I'm bummed out about that. No, it was like, I feel truly sorry for this person. I, my heart hurts for this person that they're so locked up in their ego that they won't even yeah. look. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. I see Dan there. Hey, buddy. What's going on, you guys? How are you? What are you headed off to? Um, oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, thanks for, thanks for joining me. And I was just about to cut in and say I got to go. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, JJ was just talking about, you know, it, it's so funny. He was saying, um, you know, about his sister, you know, being alive for the last 10 years and not even living. And it was so funny. We have zero plans for um, the 4th of July. And it was probably 1030 last night. And Liz goes, what do you, what do you feel like doing? You want to go to bed? And I go, you know what I want to do tomorrow? I want to get up and I want to go up to the uh, Olympic National Forest and find a place in the middle of nowhere. Nobody's going to buy a Konga machine in the next 48 hours. I just want to completely check out. Why don't yeah. we wake up on the 4th of July, end up somewhere on the beach and go watch the fireworks. And so, you know, and I was just thinking about that, you know, that people, so many people don't even have a chance, um, you know, to do that, you know, like he was saying with his sister, you know, being alive, but not living some people even that have, I mean, I know a lot of people are vacationing over the next two days, but we're going because we choose to not because it's allocated from work and here we go. But, you know, yeah. I'm just grateful for a life today where, you know, I get to make the decisions, you know, and now it's yeah. kind of drizzling and raining a little bit and I'm waking up thinking, you want to head to the rainiest North, uh, you know, rainforest in North America. Maybe you need to rethink your idea, but you know, it's about, it's about the experience and it's about the adventure. And it's about the fact that, you know, we get to do whatever we want. And if we get up there and it's too wet, we just go get a hotel room, I guess. But yeah. you know, I'm just really, really grateful, you know, to, to have this Avenue and, and to be in a place where, where I can live. You know, I, I was talking to a guy the other day and he was saying something along the lines of the same thing. You know, he had really swollen, feet look like neuropathy from diabetes and he was talking about something he used to like to do and he goes but you know I haven't been able to do that in like 12 years and I was like how old are you and he's like 51 and I'm thinking well you know you stop being able to do the things you wanted to do in life at 39 yeah. and that's okay yeah. you know and I, I just felt incredibly sad for a, you know somebody who's you know at 39 I'm sorry but that's not that's not living a whole lot of life and to just kind of hit that button and check out and go well, I guess I'm okay with being done, man. I'm not okay with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah, not okay yeah. with that. And I'm, and you know, and kind of like Sam said, fighting the people, you know, and I'm not really trying to be around anybody that is okay with that. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm really not. So, you know, I keep my eyes up and I, I appreciate all you guys. And what are you guys doing for the holidays? I mean, not to get off topic, but. Uh, just sticking around here. I think we're gonna, we're just, we might, 
take a drive. Uh, well, actually, it's, it's going to get sunny here. Uh, you know, you know, uh, summer starts on July 5th around here, right? Sure. <laughs> so, right. So, uh, so, so uh, we'll probably just stick around here, go see some fireworks shows, maybe in Kirkland or Bellevue or something like that. But nice. Well, nice. In, enjoy and, you know, uh, wish me luck on my adventure. I'm not, I'm not much of a camper. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it works out. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go now. I got to vacuum out the car before we put the dogs in it, but I'll see you guys um, for sure on the 6th. Hey, yeah. Dan, I, yes. I would like to ask you if you wouldn't mind taking just another moment real quick just to expand on on what has become mostly today's subject because we we've, we've kind of been talking about awareness and ego and right. um, if i remember correctly um you were a lot like i was when it came to first being introduced to congan water it took uh, like 18 months or something like that for you 14. to finally take a look at it um I, i'd like you to ask or i'd like to just ask you if you as you look back on it in retrospect and the things that you've learned, um, do you think that your ego had something to do with the fact that it took 18 months for you to finally take a look-see? Oh, 1,000%. I mean, I, if you run into anybody that says they took a year and a half to look at this, but it, their ego didn't, they're a liar. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, and I love the question you asked Sam about humility, and I loved his answer. I mean, you know, traveling – Spending a month in Indonesia this year really uh, gives you a lot of perspective. You know, and it's funny, we, we never listened to our parents, but my whole entire life before my dad passed away, he just said, you know, when you ever come across a situation you don't understand, I want you to remember, you could probably write a book about what you don't know, but remember this always, they fill libraries with what you don't know. And, you know, when, when the subject of this water came up, I didn't think about him or those words, but, you know, I really think about it today because you know, I was pretty sure just like you were that, you know, some guy was trying to rip me off and this, that, and the other, and da, 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 da. And, you know, it's the greatest thing that I've ever done for myself. And, and, you know, if I told people what I've gotten back from that $4,000 machine, they wouldn't believe me anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not just, and I'm not just talking about physically, but you know, the life that I get to live and everything else. And, you know, and, and so now when I come across a situation and that's another reason I'm grateful for Kong and water, because it's reminded me to, to be open to everything because, you know, I was missing a huge component of what was going to make me feel good on a daily basis for a very, very, very long time. And, and part of that was my doing. And so now when something comes up, you know, I, I don't, I don't fall for anything, but I'll listen to everything and, and be open-minded. I'll, I'll process it. I'll go through whatever process I need to, and I'll make a decision based on what I need to do as an adult. But, you know, I don't really, just outright dismiss anything right off the bat anymore. I mean, I'm very, I try to be very open-minded. Oh, I love that. I, I, I'm the same way, buddy, you know, cause that's, you, you just simply can't be closed minded it, it, these days. I mean, to the people that are going to be watching this days, weeks, months, and years from now, if there's anything that we hope, I, I would imagine that I'm kind of speaking for all three of us when I say this, but you, you need to be open-minded to things. You've got to take a look. You, well, you need to check your ego at the door and take a look. And, you know, you might be, you might be ignoring the answer to your prayers. Well, you know, and it's funny, like just what Sam was talking about, you know, the person that, you know, that brings up a certain theory would have been, you know, executed on the spot or, <laughs> you know, the Wright brothers. It wasn't that long ago that people were going, these guys are idiots, man. This thing will never fly. You know, and I was just on a jet going 650 miles an hour for 18 hours over the ocean going to Indonesia. That, that's humbling. I'll tell you that. And, you know, Sam and I are about the same age. And I don't know if he remembers, but I remember being a kid and hearing adults go, who the hell would need a phone in their car? How silly is that? Now we can't even sit across from the person that we love for 20 minutes and have lunch and not pick it up three times. You know, so don't listen to anybody else because you know what? You can take their limited beliefs and that's exactly where they're going to end up. Do you know, I distinctly remember that. My mom was one of the very first people. She was very, very high up in corporate America. They mandated she get a cell phone. My mom was like, my mom was like the laughing stock of our neighborhood, but it was kind of like laughing stock. And well, she works for a big company and only rich people can have those things. But it was like, who in the world would need a phone in the car? I remember people when I was like seven, eight, nine years old, people going, 
why would your mom why would your mom need a phone in her car that's just silly who would want that kind of distraction and this that and the other mm-hmm. and you know i we were talking i was listening to a radio broadcast the other day do you know how many times the average person picks up their phone today do you even want to take a guess 100 I'm times 329 times oh and this is funny and this is funny because this is goes to show the, the the psychology of the mindset and less and and over 200 of those are to actually check something but a hundred of those a day are just to have it in their hand yeah it's an addiction <laughs> it's you know and like sam was talking about yesterday in training that there's just certain addictions so i don't want to go far too far down the rabbit hole but i'll tell you this man I don't listen to anybody anymore because yeah. their best thinking has them where they're at and you know, they're getting up and they're okay with sitting into, I was, I was out to lunch with a buddy of mine who, um, who just, you know, he won't look at this technology. He's always giving me the God, I'm looking for something else. I'm so done with my gig. He was telling me at lunch the other day, his morning commute now is one hour and 50 minutes. And he goes, yeah, but the good thing is my afternoon commute coming home home is only an hour and 30 and when in the world did we become okay with with three hours a day in our car that we're not paid for that's not time freedom you know that's (laughs) that that's driving around in a metal cop and waiting for an answer you know but that that, that's that's freedom right that's today's freedom that's what well but here's, here's the thing he's a little too good to talk to anybody about water because that's silly so hey you know, it's okay. <laughs> that's, that's, so that, that, that's what I mean. We, we have to be out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, knock yourself out, man. Enjoy that traffic. And here's the funny thing. Like the tap water is never going to get better. The bottled water is never going to get cheaper. Let me tell you something. That traffic's never going to get better either. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I just, I think we're aligned. We're, we're, we're sitting in the perfect storm waiting for, waiting for the people. But while we're at it, man, follow Sam's advice. Talk to the people that look you in the eye. Meet people where they're at. Don't fight the resistance. We're not in the twisting arms business. You know, let, let's help the people that want to be helped. And the others, they will follow suit one day. They're the yeah. people that are mocking the cell phone. <laughs> so true. That's so true. You know? Yeah. Amen, brother. Thank you so yeah. much for being here today and for all your wisdom. And, and you and Liz have a great weekend. Safe travels. We Yes, we sure will try, man. You guys have a safe wherever you are. <laughs> all right, you guys have a safe Fourth of July, and I'll see you soon, Sam. I, right, I, right, take care. All right, brother. So yeah, yeah Sam, what a great, uh, what a great discussion today. You know, this is this is one of the big subjects that you know when we started this day, this this meeting this morning, we didn't re- really even know what we were going to talk about, but. As usual, we always come up with something good to talk about that can add some value to people's lives. And, and man, I think you're right on the money that ego is, is really one of the biggest things that people need to overcome. One of the, probably the, you know, like in Monday's meeting with Sharon, we were talking about the, you know, the six inches between our ears and how that's, that's the biggest obstacle that people face. And, and, you know, surely the ego has a tremendous role to play in that obstacle and uh, you know i'd like to ask you as we get you know we've been here about an hour it's time to get moving um but um i'm wondering if you have any like main little piece of advice that you would like to to give out to the family as far as you know what's what's the best way what's the best thing um, you know, what, what, would, what would your main thing be to say to somebody about how they could, if they are somebody who desires to do so, because some people just simply don't desire it, it's so whatever. But for those who, who maybe do have a little bit of struggle with their ego um, and they would really love to see it go away and they'd love to check their ego at the door, but they just can't seem to do it. What kind of advice would you have for somebody like that that would maybe help them to be able to to reach that goal of checking their ego and listening to their logic a little more? Well, um, I, I would ask them, uh, hey, how's, how's their life going? How's their life going? Because uh, when you ask about someone's life, it doesn't speak to their ego. You know, uh, life, life speaks to your heart. 
life speaks to your soul. And so, so um, I don't want to, you know, because ego, ego has a, a fight or flight response, right? Ego is, is self-preservation. Ego is about me, me, me. And so I don't want to talk to that selfish person, person that personality. I want to talk to, um, you know, how's, how's life going for you? Are you, are you happy? Are you healthy? You know, are things going good? You know, are you, are you having a good time at least? You know, because we're on this planet temporarily. Are you, are you having a good time? Are you experiencing the things that, uh, that you want to experience? You know, and, and, and get into that discussion. And so, you know, it's kind of a, a roundabout way of getting to, because uh, ego doesn't like to be addressed head on. You know, the only way to get rid of ego is to shine a light on it. And, and by shining a light on it, what you do is you, you could do that directly, like a flashlight. You can shine a flashlight on something, right? But you can also light up the room by just shining the light at the roof and the whole room, the, you know, the whole room lights up. You know, instead of lighting that one object, you can light up the whole room. So I'd, I'd rather light up the whole room than to, to shine a light on, on ego, which is going to fight me. You know, um, and it'll become apparent. It'll become apparent and... And they'll have to come to terms, their own terms, about uh, how their life is going, and if they're using the right vehicle. That's all it is. It's, I mean, we go from birth to death, and so the whole point is to to live life, right? The whole point is to experience it, you know. But but you know, if you're not experiencing life, if you're not, you know, if you don't have the freedom, I know we're about to celebrate Fourth of July here, but Fourth of July isn't really about buying fireworks, you know, and, and just celebrating, you know, celebrating uh, freedom. Freedom is about celebrating freedom. Freedom is having choice. And so that's why I ask people about that. I, I don't ask her, hey, have you looked at your ego lately? It's like, no, no one's going <laughs> to, no one's going to like, uh, hello, what are you talking about? I, I don't have an ego. You know, ego is going to say, I don't have an ego. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it wants to be invisible, but it wants to rule the world, right? So, so what you speak to is you speak to someone's heart. You speak to you speak to them with compassion, right? So that's why that's why when you walk up, JJ, when you walk up to someone at the grocery store and go, "Hey, did you know you're drinking acidic water?" And here's a card. Call me. You know why it's rejected? Because you're challenging their their belief system. You're 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 challenging their ego. Right. And so and so, um, you know, people take a fight or flight. And so what I do is I say, oh, wow, like you must be you must be a pretty healthy person because you drink a lot of water. That's really good. Right. Like pay him a compliment first. Uh, good idea. Yeah. He, he's just trying to keep his Keurig water machine healthy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. So that's what I mean, like pay someone a compliment first and then lower that, lower that bar, you know, like, um, make a friend first, make a friend first and then, and then pitch them an idea about saving their own life later. Yeah. Man, I love that. Yeah. So, so that's, 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 that's my approach. You know, I, you know, and some people, you know, <clears throat> and I'm still learning myself, you know, I, I, I still have a lot of tactfulness to learn because I, you know, I, as you can see from my posts and you can see from my my evolution on Facebook, I, I, I'm changing. You know, there there are there are some things I, I still jab people with, right? I still I just still jab people with uh, logic. And and maybe for the Kangan people it's like, yeah, yeah, you tell them, Sam. But for a lot of my friends, like they they, they go into they go into uh, they curl up into a ball because I'm beating them up logically. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't necessarily want to do that, but, you know, and I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather challenge them than, than, than to visit them at the funeral. Right. Yeah. You know, or in the hospital, you know, so, um, yeah, you know, so that's why I, you know, I'm, I've become detached, right? And so uh, becoming detached means that you, you care, but you don't care. I care, you know, obviously to do this work and to, um, to share with the world, you have to have a lot of compassion, right? But uh, compassionate people, I also have a heart, right? And that heart often gets stepped on 
or, or, or ridiculed by the friends that you're trying to be compassionate about. And so what happens is you, you, you in a self-defense mechanism, I've become detached. I, I'm, I'm no longer there to receive, uh, to receive anyone's criticism. I know what I know and I'm doing what I do. And I, you know, whether you believe me or not, I'm not even there to listen to your, your story. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I'm here to sell you on this idea that you have a life that's worth it. I'm not here. I'm not here to buy your idea that your life is not worth it or my life is not worth it. I'm not here to buy that idea from you. Sure. I'm here to sell you on your life. But hey, if you, it's, but it's up to you to buy. <laughs> I love that. Every time we have you on the show, you come up with something better than you yeah. came up with the last time, brother. I am so blessed be able to get to meet with you once a month here on this platform and so blessed to have actually been able to meet you in person and give real hugs and and just be able to learn from such a gracious um aware person you know and just learn you're just out there teaching people every day um you've gone from being a scientist to a teacher and it's and it's such an incredible blessing for our family and and i am just so grateful that you you take the time, man, and I just can't tell you how much I love you. The words, the words don't even uh, convey it properly, buddy. But I just love you so much and appreciate what you do. And I can't wait till the time comes that I can get up there and get to meet your family and and uh, you know get to introduce you guys to to my sweetie and and yeah. just continue this journey. This is such a Incredible journey. It's a long journey, JJ, and I appreciate you so much for sharing this. Like uh, you know, um, you know, you're you're battling through it, right? And and, and our job is to to help each other uh, gain the skills and gain the awareness that we can keep battling, because uh, this is this is not a job that we're doing, right? This is something that, that we're passionate about. This is something that we share with the world because we care, you know. Um, so I'm just helping people get the tools. Uh, that they can be uh, warriors. You know, we're, we're compassionate uh, uh, health warriors, right? We're 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 helping people awaken, but we can't we, we can't be susceptible uh, to the dragon that we're trying to slay. Yeah. Right. And so so my role, and I appreciate your role too in, in sharing this message with the world, is to to uh, get uh, get the understanding, get the awareness out there that there's something bigger here. You know, I, I've, I've seen heaven um, and heaven's a cool place, but there's, there's no baggage in heaven. There's no cars or bank accounts. There's, there's only, hey, what did you do with your time? And I, I feel that this is a better use of my time than what I was doing before in my previous career. You know, and, and, and I, I applaud you and I appreciate you for sharing that message with people and then sharing your passion. That's what it's about. You know, um, we have to, when we find each other, we have to stick together. Because if we don't, then we divide each other and we, we fall apart. And that's, that's what's going on with the planet. So, but uh, thanks for your time today. And then uh, I'll look forward to uh, catching up with you guys and, uh, and catching, tuning in and to some of the other, uh, some of the other talks. Because you always have great guests on here, buddy. Yeah, I'm trying to bring, bring value, baby. We got to bring value to the world every day. That's, uh, that's yeah. another way that we can help people check their egos at the doors. If we can show yeah. them value, show them things that, that can, uh, can turn them around. And, and, you know, like we say around here, we're the Kong family and we want to change the world. And uh, we've kind of added a new little twist to that. And that is that we need to change our world first. Yeah. You know, change the world, starting with your own. That's so true. Once you change your own world, then you have the ability to potentially change somebody else's world. And, and I know that from being involved with this Congan family and all the things that I've learned because of it, here's my little angel. She loves to jump up on my desk and crawl across the computer and hit the edit button or whatever. But you know, buddy, we, we are changing our worlds and my world has changed so drastically in the last year and a half. Uh, just the different ways that I react to things from being in there on Thomas's morning motivations uh, to all the things that I've learned from incredible people like you. Um, it's really, it's so incredibly blessing to my life. And, and what I'm trying to do is share those blessings out 
with other people's lives so that, you know, we can all change the world together, buddy. And man, uh, it's, it's just incredible. It's uh, all these years. I, like I've said before, I had my last time clock punching job when I was 19 years old. Now I'm 53 years young. And, uh, and I finally have found that thing that I've been looking for my whole life. Yeah. I finally found that thing that really hits me in the heart and, and, you know, and my soul and my brain and just everything. It's so crazy how much it's changing my life. And yeah. so, so JJ, speak from the heart, speak from the heart, but use your ego as a step stool. Use your ego as a soapbox. Right. But speak from the heart. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's why I'm doing, that's why, you know, you, you see me, you know, Sam's pretty vocal. Sam's pretty, uh, uh, you know, like to the point, Sam's pretty focused on what he's trying to do. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not taking any prisoners because I'm, I'm standing on my ego and I'm speaking from the heart. And so it might appear, it might appear that I'm, I'm, antagonizing a lot of people it might appear that i'm i'm pushing buttons but that's only to the ego that's only to the people that have big egos because ego can spot ego right but but i also appeal to a lot of people that are, are speak from the heart like i have a lot of passion we have a lot of passion for what we do and so so but we have to have a voice and i i, I use my ego as a step stool for my heart Amen, brother. All right. All right. Thank you so much for being here today, buddy. Have a happy 4th of July weekend. Go out you there too. and have some fun. And, uh, of course, do not forget your hugs. Yeah. <laughs> do not forget right. your hugs, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Take care, buddy. I'll, I'll catch up with you soon. Make it a great day, buddy. Love you. Oh, you too. Thanks right. again. Bye-bye. Bye for now.